Hello, hello, my nasties. Welcome back to the channel. Today is going to be a color in chat video featuring, of course, the lovely Ms. Spooklets Volume 1. This is going to be my first color in chat for the month of October. As we all know, at least most of you know, but for the uninitiated, every October, a few of the ladies over at my coloring group, primarily Shaleen and Kate, they have set up a hashtag for me called hashtag Carloween, and that is essentially for the entire month of October, people can color in any of my books. There's no specific book. There's no real rule other than color in anything that I have produced and hashtag it Carloween. That's it. Join the Facebook group if you would like. The ladies over there do a great job of it. Without further ado, I'm going to hop on into this page. So I asked you all to vote on the page, or on the book rather, to use for this first color and chat, and you all wanted Spooklets. So Spooklets it is, and I've already selected the color palette today. I'm going to go with this. It's kind of a play on the cover kind of, sort of, for my previous color and chat for, um, where is she? Girl, where are you? I gravitated toward colors which just so happened to be very similar to the cover of this book, as you can see here. Kind of, sort of, ish. They're a lot bolder, a lot stronger, but still reds, or I'm sorry, purples, oranges, greens, that sort of thing. And today I pulled out some pinks and greens kind of sort of the same but not really all right talking too much talking too much today I want oh look at that not quite the exact same colors but kind of sorta my mind it thinks in the same colors I guess I don't know Let's do this one. Grab a piece of cardstock, shove it behind her, and let's go. So as I always say, I try to keep my color and chat sessions to two to three sit down sessions, no more than that. I just, I have no real particular reason other than I just don't, I don't treat my coloring books as precious objects. I treat them as just playtime. And I have so many other projects going on right now that I cannot dedicate hours and hours and hours to a page. I just wanna sit down, make something cute, get it out the door, that's it. Doesn't have to be any more cerebral than that. So what I'm going to do for the background is I'm going to play with a little bit of color blocking today. These colors are making me want to color block a little bit. Why, who knows, but we are, and by the way, for those of you who have the Cali Art Markers and who wish to follow along either completely or bits and bobs. You want to pull bits and bobs out of this video to try to play with yourself. I'm going to call out the names of the markers. So I'm using R427, which is old red, uh, pastel rose, which is R304, salmon, which is Y713, pale olive, which is Y025, and Anise, which is G902. All right, so I'm going to later on also whip out the gel pens. You know, me and my gel pens are like this. So I'll be grabbing those in a future session, but for now I'm concerned with just laying down the base colors. And oh my God, girl, talking too much. This is a lengthy intro. My apologies. Okay, so um, I'm going to color block the web. And we're gonna go in with the lighter of the greens. And just slap it down. Again, I'm not treating this like a masterpiece. This is just something fun to create really quickly as I warm up for the day because I do have a list, a list of things to get to today. I spent 
a portion of yesterday scanning the artwork for an upcoming coloring book. I actually sat down and scanned the artwork for two upcoming books. One of them is going to be for, it's one of my standard releases, and then the other one is going to be geared towards my Cat Eyes and Cacti brand. So two thirds of you are not going to be interested in that book, although I'm not so sure this time. I think there's going to be a bit more cross-pollination, but I'm not gonna to talk too much about it yet. You guys are just gonna to have to sit around and wait because that book will not be released until next year. Which sounds like a long way off, but this year has been zooming by, which is a little scary, so we'll see, we'll see. So initially when I thought that I wanted to color block, I thought that I was going to fill in these segments with the same color, but I don't think so. I think I'm going to introduce another color all together, if I can find the tone of green that I would like, the one that I'm envisioning in my head for that. We'll see. As always, I will have the art supplies listed down below. So by the time this is finished, I'm going to probably throw at least two different types of gel pens at it. So while I'm not mentioning it now, definitely take a look down below. If you are curious about what I'm using, most of the supplies you have already in your arsenal, I would assume. I think most people own at least a few jelly rolls and a couple of alcohol markers, right? So if you don't necessarily have the colors that I own, just do your thing, do your thing, baby. You don't have to copy the colors that I use, unless you want to, but if you don't have them, don't feel as though you need to go out and purchase them, just use what you've got. Sit down, grab a book, hang out, and you're good. By the way, uh, should I mention it in this video? Should I mention that in this video or should I wait until it's out? Although I suppose if I mention it in my next coloring chat, it will, I'll just mention it now. So I am planning, and we're just going to use the word plan to cover our tracks. I am planning on releasing a coloring page for October. If you've been watching my videos or following my social media, I've been releasing a coloring page every season this year, just, just because, just an extra way to keep people busy during quarantine and such. I have finished up the autumn coloring page and it is heavily Halloween inspired. I'll just go ahead and fill all this in. I had released a coloring page that was fall themed, was it last year or two years ago? I believe it was two years ago. And it was definitely more of a general, non halloween -y autumn scene. So this year I went all out and I illustrated a Halloween page, which by the time this color and chat video is up, I will have likely already shared it to my Instagram and she's probably already for sale on Etsy which is great, you can go pick her up if you are interested in that particular art piece. But I'm also going to be releasing a freebie Carloween themed Halloween page. So be looking out for that if you don't currently own my books, if you've no real interest in owning my books, but maybe you'd like to participate in Car Carloween, there will be a freebie page coming soon. By the time you watch this, it's probably already out, but if you are unaware, if you don't follow me on social media, you'll be hearing it here for the first time, but yes, go get your freebie. And if by some bizarre reason, because now I said it, now I probably put my foot in my mouth, if something happens and the page isn't released by the time this color and chat is out, I promise you it will be soon. It will be released before the month is over, okay? So you've got a coloring page for fall that is for sale and then a freebie page.
You guys know I don't like excuses. I hate excuses of any kind. So if people want to participate in Carloween and they think, oh, I don't have the right colors or, oh, I don't have any of Carla's work. No, that is a bunch of bull. I'm offering you not only a free page and I'm telling you, I'm telling you to use whatever you have at your disposal. Even if the colors are gross and don't match, make it work. In the words of the legendary Tim Gunn, make it work. And if you don't know who Tim Gunn is, first of all, how dare you? Second, oh, I love him to pieces. He was a host, among other things, among other things. I'm not reducing him to just being a host on Project Runway ages ago, but he's an amazing fashion lover, former professor at Parsons, just mm, brilliant man. I want to do a yellow color block in the background, but here's the thing. Here is the situation. So I mentioned, I may have mentioned it several times at this point actually, that I am slowly trying to work my way through my set of Cali Art markers. These markers, well, those markers, that commotion that you just heard, those markers came in a set of, uh, was it 100? I want to say it was a set of 100. And they were inexpensive. They were under $50. So I purchased them and I'm not one to overbuy. I don't like buying multiple sets of markers that are within the same color range. So for instance, you know how brands will release uh, markers, colored pencils, all of those companies. They will release basic sets of colors. They're going to release a set of primaries, a set of pastels, a set of natural colors, a set of uh, neutral colors, that sort of thing. Well, what I do is I purposely avoid buying anything that is going to be a basic color set just because how many red markers do you need at your disposal? How many basic ass yellow colored pencils do you need? So that way I avoid over accumulating the same colors. Now that being said, because this set of Cali Art markers is so enormous, I'm trying to use up the colors that I have, all of them. I'm trying to use them all up, just as a challenge to myself, because I will be purchasing more alcohol markers. I'm going to be picking and choosing some Copics. I'm going to be doing some Prismas and all of that. But I'm going to avoid purchasing colors that I don't like to use. However, before I do that, I want to challenge myself to use colors that I don't use and making sure that I go through every single color in the Cali Art set will ensure that I'm challenging myself to use colors that I otherwise would not use and colors that I will not be purchasing in the future. So it's just a fun little experiment. It's kind of a swan song, if you will, for the color, for the Cali Art markers to just just play with colors that I wouldn't normally use just, just in case I make a new discovery and might want to carry that into my future artwork. It may happen, it may not, but at least I'm going to use every single color. I don't like to waste art supplies. I don't like it, I won't do it. Mm -mm. I'm not an art supply hoarder. I'm sure it's fun, but it's stressful to me. It's fun for some, but to me it's just, stresses me out. Over accumulation and not using enough is just no, 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 no. It ends up putting a damper on your creativity actually because then you are spoiled for choice, right? You have too many options and it's just too much, too much of too much. And that was today's lecture. Sorry about that. Okay, we are going to jump into the hair now. 
And I'm going to say that for this page, I'm going to do what I typically do with the skin tone, which is no skin tone. I tend to prefer unnatural skin tones over natural skin tones, or I like extreme skin tones, skin tones that lie on the most extreme ends of the spectrum. So let me explain that. I like either very deep dark skin or very pale skin. I think when you have a skin tone that's very light, you are able to play with a bunch of fun colors that are going to contrast with that skin tone a lot. And you can also play with pastels that are going to blend in and give a very ethereal quality to it. On the other end of the spectrum, if you have a very dark skin tone, you can play with bold, punchy colors, just beautiful. I don't think that anyone that has deeper, darker, beautiful skin tones looks terrible when they wear something that's bright yellow or pink or just exuberant colors that, oh, they just look beautiful against a backdrop of beautiful brown skin. Pale people, oh my God, they look incredibly ethereal when they're wearing pastel colors. I love it, it's beautiful. And with my coloring, I like the colors to speak for themselves. And that's basically what I'm getting at here is that I think of skin as a completely neutral canvas just completely plain and slap all the color you want on top of it and it's just yum. And so with my coloring, I I just, I don't want my coloring figures to look human. I mean, they're cartoons. Why am I going to want them to look like boring human beings, right? So I either let the white shine through of the paper or I give them an unnatural skin tone. Blue, green, pink, that sort of thing. That's why you will never catch me agonizing over blending skin tones, getting all that right, because it's just, it's not my thing. If that's your thing, do you. If you are learning how to shade, if you are wanting to teach yourself how to do things correctly, then yeah, by all means, learn how to do skin tones. So I'm not over here trying to poo-poo people who are wanting to do things by the book. Absolutely not. I think it looks great. As a matter of fact, I have seen several examples of you delicious people out there who take my coloring pages, like this one, for example, very super hyper cartoony. I mean, there's nothing realistic about this girl at all. Big old bobble head, little teeny tiny waist. I mean, she's, she's, if she were real, she would be a deformity, yes? But I've seen people who take my style of artwork and then they will color in a more realistic fashion on top of my artwork. So they will take my color or take my page and then they will slap their beautifully rendered colors on top of it and it almost gives the artwork a 3D animation type of look. It looks great. I think it looks really cool. They will fully model the face, the lights, the shadows, all that, and it looks really cool. I mean, truly, it is badass. So before I get anybody, before I get any Karens in the chat below trying to say like, oh, Carla, she's just, she's poo-pooing my my technical prowess or my pursuit of technical prowess. Karen, don't get your panties in a bunch. On my planet, you guys are allowed to do whatever the hell you want, okay? So if you're trying to pick a fight with me, it's just because you're a bitter Betty and you need to find something productive to do with your life. What was that? That was rant number 237 for the day. I think I'm doing pretty good so far.
Oh, one more thing I want to talk about too, because as I'm going to be blocking in this color, I come across comments every so often, not necessarily on <clears throat> my Instagram or on my social media, but when I pop into Instagram and I see your pages that you hashtag, every once in a while I will um, go through the hashtags and see the work that you guys are doing in my books when you tag me. And I read in the captions that some people are a little iffy, a little hesitant to experiment with flat color. The straw that broke this camel's back the other day as I was in the Facebook coloring group, just eyeballing. I eyeball what people share in that group every once in a while because it makes my day. And somebody had submitted a lovely page that was if I remember correctly, the page was primarily flat color with not a whole lot of shading, if any shading at all. I can't quite remember, but it was pretty flat, the colors. And the sweetie that submitted it was a little concerned about it. She said something to the effect of, oh, you know, I'm not very good at shading or I'm practicing shading, so I left the colors kind of flat. And I, of course, had to chime my butt in and I said, girl, don't worry about shading. Shading is, it can be a bit overrated. Shading is beautiful. As I said, fully rendered pages are beautiful, but they have their merit. They are equally valid as something that is going to be a flat color. I think flat color is amazing. There's a term for it. It's called, it's an animation term called cell shading. When animations are colored very bold and flat and the point is not only to lend a more graphic look to the artwork but to also allow it to be easier to produce because animators are working 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 right and so you're you're trying to develop techniques that are going to expedite the process of creation and flat color and color blocking is an excellent way of let's call it sophisticated cheating because it's not necessarily cheating because it's definitely a style all its own and it's a style that I think looks cool. I love flat color. Hello, look at my work. Yeah, I love to blend. I love to use watercolor. I love to do all of that sort of shenaniganry. But flat color like this looks just as cool. I love it. I employ quite a bit of color blocking and flat color areas in my work. I just, I do a little bit of everything and I love it. And don't be afraid to keep things simple. It's the KISS principle of art and design. For those of you who are not familiar, KISS is an acronym for keep it simple, stupid. And it's, it's just a little tongue in cheek sort of unofficial rule for design. Because some people have a tendency to, myself included, to over render, to overdo. And that's just something that we all fall victim to overworking a piece. The more you create, the more you develop experience and learn your style, overworking becomes a little bit less of a problem, but it's always gonna be there. That demon of overworking is always going to be looming over your pretty little heads while you're working. It's just something that happens. As I said, I've fallen victim to it many times, and I still do. I've also developed techniques to try to combat any overworking that I do. And sometimes those techniques are effective, sometimes they're not. Sometimes I just overwork a piece to death and I have to either start over or completely scrap it. And that's fine. It happens. It's just, it's part of the process. It's totally fine. Which is why I hope, I hope, I hope that a healthy number of you out there are using my books as a way to, yeah, express yourself, but also experiment, 
because there are 25 pages, at least 25 pages in my books to play around with. So if you screw up a page, you screw up a page. Hell, if you screw up 10 pages, you still have plenty of pages to play with. If you screw up an entire book, listen, at least you finished the darn book. All right? Never be negative about creativity because truly there is nothing negative about doing anything creative. You're always learning. Always, 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 always. This is why I can't wrap my brain around why people agonize so much over sketchbooks, sketchbooks, sketchbooks. People will purchase a sketchbook and they will avoid it. They will actively avoid the damn thing because they don't want to ruin the pages inside. They want to make sure that every page, every spread is beautiful. Guys, it's in the title. It is a sketchbook. Throw everything at it. If you want to create a few beautiful spreads in your sketchbook, girl, boy, creature, whatever you are, do it. Do it. Create some beautiful pages. Create some funky ones. It's a sketchbook. There's this weird mentality about people who are afraid of other people looking at their screw-ups. Because I, I don't know. Now, in my head, this is just me. This is just my just assumption. I think it's because people are afraid, just as they are afraid of being seen disheveled in pajamas without makeup. People don't want them to see themselves. People don't want others to see them in a state of disrepair. Okay? And I'm, listen... I will not go to the gas station in my pajamas. That's not my thing. I'm not going to do that. First of all, I don't like to leave the house in pajamas. That's just gross to me. Um, I, I'm not saying that I have to be in a ball gown when I go to the grocery store, but I don't want people to see me fresh out the shower, wet, no eyeliner in pajamas and it's not because I care about other people's judgment because let's be real nobody gives a damn what you look like nobody cares nobody cares but it's for me I just feel frumpy I feel gross as I said I won't go to the gas station who's looking at me at the gas station nobody okay half the time there's nobody at the gas station I go to anyway I just it's just something for me I don't like to look disheveled, and so I do my best not to. And the thing is, going to the gas station looking like a slob is temporary, whereas a sketchbook is permanent. So if you're doing sloppy work, if you're doing a lot of crappy, quote-unquote crappy work in your sketchbook, you're worried that people are going to see that, and they're going to think, oh, half of the stuff this girl produces is crap, blah, 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 which just isn't true, which isn't true artists, singers, songwriters, musicians, they produce a lot of crap, a lot of sketchy work, a lot of bits of this and bits of that that never turn into anything beautiful, but it's all those little steps of garbage that are going to lead you to your pristine castle in the sky, so to speak. You're going to produce a lot of little chicken scratch sketches on post-it notes and sketchbook pages that are going to lead you to a beautiful final piece. In some cases, not always. And it's fine. Oh, look at my sketchbook. My sketchbook is right here. It's falling apart. I will never buy this sketchbook again, by the way, but it's falling apart. And there's a lot of crap in here. Sorry, this color and chat is turning into a show and tell, but there's just I've got fully rendered pieces. I have sketches like this. Do I care who looks at it? No. Because I know that I can create adorable finished work like this. And a sketchbook is just part of the process. So, <laughs> I don't know what lesson this was for today. That was lesson, let's see, we did like rant 
947, and this is going to be motivational speech number 845. How's that? Don't be afraid of producing crap in your coloring books. Maybe that's what I was trying to get at with the whole sketchbook speech. Don't be afraid to create garbage. Use the coloring books as a sort of sketchbook for your coloring, okay? Cool. If you're not an illustrator and you don't keep a regular sketchbook, well, you're a colorist. Use your coloring books as your sketchbooks. Boom. There you go. Wow. Too much talking. Girl, shut your mouth. All right, so let's do a little bit more. I was cut off just as I was about to start doing the sleeve and the tights, the socks, whatever these are. So let us continue, shall we? What shall we do? Let's start getting into the outfit. There's not a whole lot to get into because she's not wearing a whole lot. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do about the ruffle on her neck? Let's do dark. Let's go with this dark red. And then I think once we finish up this ruffle, I may go in and reach for the gel pens. I think we're ready for gel pens. You've been watching me use the markers for what, about half an hour now? Yeah, we should, we should move into something a little different, something a, a little spicy. Voila, and where is my pen box? Here we go. Ooh, you know what we're going to play with today? Something that I always bitch about that I don't necessarily love I'm always struggling to find a use for, but we're going to play with the metallic jelly rolls today. The color palette will lend itself pretty well to that. So I'm gonna reach for the green. Maybe we'll use the metallic red. And I know that there's a brown metallic sepia. Ooh, and there's also a dark green. Let's just pull these out. See? Already they, well, they look as though they're going to match based on the barrel color, but we'll see what happens when I actually start to use them. And I'm also going to reach for, there's a sepia glaze pen that one of you sent me. Doris, I believe it was you. I think Sepia will look nice on this. We'll see. We'll see if I'm going to use it, but we'll go with that. And what else are we going to grab? Maybe that. And maybe that. And where's my gold sparkle pop? Got to have that one. Boom. And I think we're good. I think for the moment... We're set on the colors. So let me do a little swatchy poo. These metallic jelly rolls, I just, they're not my favorite. Okay, that one I think I'm already gonna toss out. That's a no. This green one is a maybe. I hate that the jelly rolls don't have names, it's annoying. That one, I think that's a, supposed to be a red. That's a maybe. It's a brown. Mm, I think that's a no. And 
that orange. What the hell is this? It swatched a little pink and then orange. What is this? It's like pinky orange. What is this abomination of a pen? Metallic peachy pinky orange. Ew. I can see there being a use for that, but not on this page. Well, I don't know. Well, mm, that's a maybe not, but we'll play with these two. And then I grabbed this hybrid metallic, which is the black one with the red glitter. I think that may be interesting. And the metallic orange, maybe. And that sepia, maybe. You know, let me grab... brown glitter that may be interesting maybe in the wink of Stella's shoot what is going on with this glaze pen <sighs> come on don't do this to me maybe okay so her outfit you know let's go ahead and do the outfit in this fun we're gonna do it two-tone we're gonna go with the black sparkle pop or pentel dual metallic call it whatever you'd like these pens are identical I know I've said it before if you've been here for a while Cool your jets. I know I'm being repetitive, but there are new people here and there's people who don't pay attention to everything I say. They might need a reminder. These Pentel Dual Metallics are the same as the Sparkle Pops. This is just the European, well, no, let me, let me call out America for being the lame ass that it is. We get here in this country, in this country, this one country, we get these ugly, sparkle pop pen barrels these big bulky cheapy looking barrels the rest of the world europe japan everyone else gets these sleek beautiful minimalistic pen barrels i'm sorry i have everything against american tastes I'm not a big movie watcher, but even American movie posters are never as interesting. And what else? Album covers, sometimes certain albums and singles. I'm talking about music here. The artwork, the album artwork is never as cool in this country. I don't know. I don't know. America. Get your ish together. Okay, so let's do, I do love the black and red. Look how good that looks with, oh, with the ruffles. It's so pretty. Okay, so we are also going to pull that into the hair and into the ruffles. Ooh, and her makeup as well. We're going to give her, ooh, let's give her a lovely black and red. This is a black ink with red glitter. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. I love this. This is a fun pen. I like this one. I rarely use it because the color palette needs to just be, it needs to be just right for this, for me to want to reach for this pen. But when it works, baby girl, it works. Okay. And for the rest of the outfit, let's do gold glitter obnoxious gold glitter and the skull in her hair is of course going to be a Ralph so that one will also be gold if you do not know about the Ralph okay let me explain because I have a feeling that people still get confused about why I refer to certain skulls as Ralph long story short any gold skull in my life is named Ralph 
let's just say it's a spirit that embodies every gold skull in my house. Therefore, they're all called Ralph. No, I don't actually believe in spirits, but let's just play the game. Let's just play the game, okay? So every gold skull, whether it's big or small, is named Ralph, and he has become my constant companion. He sits on my desk. I, well, I have a Ralph in my bedroom, in my living room, on my art table. I have them all over the place. And so he's become, in a way, a little bit of a mascot, if you will, Gold Skull. He's tacky, he's gaudy, he's wonderful, and I love him. So anytime you see me illustrating a skull that is gold, it is Ralph. Not all skulls are Ralph's, not all of them. They have to be gold. And I do also have a glossy white skull that I live with. He's the shy one. His name is Edgar. He makes appearances every now and then, but my ride or die is definitely Monsieur Ralph. I love him so much, I even made stickers. Check it out. I don't know if you caught it on my sketchbook earlier, but look, metallic Ralph's. Shameless plug time. These are available in my Etsy shop if you would like a Ralph of your very own. I like how she's turning out. I'm going to, I almost want to put skin tone on her. I want to give her a sickly gray kind of a skin tone, but I don't, I don't want to overdo it. I always say, oh, I want to, I want to, I want to, and then mm, I pull back. And more often than not, I'm glad that I don't end up going that route. And now, let's see. What are we going to do about this stocking that's bothering me? Because it's just... It's just there. Let's do glittery orange. Are we gonna kill this entire pen? Oh my God, no, no! Am I almost out of that pen? Do I have another? Mm, okay. I kind of want to do brown, but, um, because I'm afraid that it's going to be too much glitter. I'm gonna wait, I'm not sure, I'm undecided. So let us continue on the outfit. I do for sure want to reach for my best friend, which most of you have already guessed, the black glaze pen. So let's grab that bivy and slap it on here. Friggin' jelly roll. I know my audience is small, but I've gotten so many people hooked on this pen. Why do I not have a lifetime supply? Why? Why, 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 why? Orange eyeshadow. And then we are also going to go in and give her gold liner. Pretty, 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 pretty. Ooh, yes, I love that. Let's go ahead and take the black sparkle pop or dual metallic, and we're going to just do a little bit of my signature scriggly scraggles. I know all of the hoity-toity professional colorists out there probably hate me <laughs> for doing all of this sort of thing, but you know what? Shove it. I'm also going to pull 
some of this into her hair. Let's just go ahead and add, <clears throat> let's go ahead and add a touch of this pen to wherever I've used the darker red. So I'm gonna put it on the sleeves, on the stockings. Like that, cute. And her eye color, let's give her Another thing I do, which probably freaks people out, is I give some of my girls dual colored eyes. Another one of my signatures is the two different eye colors. Okay, and for lips. I'm still undecided on the lips. I'm just gonna go with the black so I stop thinking about it. I hate overthinking. When I start overthinking, that's when I end up making a quick decision so that I don't agonize over something as silly as lipstick on a friggin' coloring page. Still debating on this. We're just gonna do it. We're gonna go for it. We're gonna kill this pen and we're gonna go in. Okay, so I almost ended up killing my pen. Not quite, it's still alive. But it is doing what I was afraid that it was gonna do and that's looking a bit too glittery, too metallic. So I am going to go in with my glazing technique. And if you don't know, I'll explain it to you. I came up with this technique a couple of years back because I was, again, concerned about the loudness of the metallic. And these pens tend to look a little bit streaky. Anything with glitter that's a gel pen has a tendency to be a little bit streaky. And in order to tone down the color and to even it out, I go over it with a glaze pen. Typically in the same color family, but not always. Sometimes I will do a completely different glaze color on top of the glitter pen. It's just, it's whatever I'm in the mood for. But you will definitely be able to see it as I lay it down. So I'm gonna start on, let's see if I can move my light just a little bit so that my hand doesn't cause too much shadow. Well, that didn't work. But you just go in over your glaze, do you see what it's doing? That the glaze pens, with the exception of the black one, tend to be translucent. So anything that's going to be underneath is going to show through. Do you see that big difference? I think it's a big difference. You might be thinking it's not like, oh, Carla, what are you talking about? I can't even tell. Well, listen, I can tell. And if you see it in person, it's definitely obvious and right here it will become even more evident when you see it on this larger area yeah you can definitely see that yes so it's unifying the color it's darkening it darkening it's unifying the color it's toning it down by darkening the glitter a little bit which is exactly what I would like to do Does this technique waste a lot of ink? Yes. Do I recommend it to you if you are looking to not go through your pens in 10 minutes? No. But this is how I do things. And for those of you who are interested in playing with my techniques, well, here you go. So thank you once again to Doris for sending me this glaze pen. I remember her saying she really, really loved it. So 
it was nice of her to send me something that she likes and I'm using it and I like it. <laughs> what else can I say? All right, now, hmm, I have a lot of blank space to work with, so I think we are going to go in and do something with the face, although I've yet to decide what exactly. The background is bothering me, so I'm going to go in with this metallic green. And we are going to add a little bit of accent to the spider web. Um, maybe, maybe not if the pen... Is this pen dry? Are you serious? It heard me speaking ill of it. It allowed me to swatch it, but now it's decided to die. I know that there are some techniques out there for reviving gel pens. I think one of them is you put it in a cup of warm water or hot water and supposedly that loosens it up a bit. I don't know, but it's definitely going through it. So I think we're going to have to nix that plan. Well, you know what? Fine. Be a jerk. Seriously, what a jerk. Okay. Well, I didn't like you anyway, so shoot. So now I'm going to correct that boo-boo by covering it up. And then I'm going to grab the green crazy pop hate the name of those pens. You see, friggin' America, really, U.S., Sparkle Pop and Crazy Pop, and it's not Crazy Pop with a C, it's Crazy Pop with a K, because we're so cool. I roll. This green isn't the right shade of green for this page, but that's okay. I think it still looks pretty cool. Okay, and then should we also do something glittery on this one? I feel like this one calls for just a plain clear glitter, which I do have somewhere. This one. Clear glitter on spider webs is so cute. I have a feeling on my Halloween pages that I colored for Carloween this year, anything that has a spider web, I'm going to try to find an excuse to put this clear on there. It's just so cute. It gives it an adorable, dewy, glittery, glistening kind of effect. It's cute, it's cute, it's cute, it's cute. Not being too careful with it, as you can tell. I'm just kind of slapping it on there. Cute, cute, cute. Can you see that? Hopefully. 
Let's play with her face. It's bothering me, it's too plain. So our girl here is going to get some neon makeup. And God, I hate using this, not because I don't like these pens, I love the Moonlights, but they just, they photograph so poorly and they scan even worse. So I always feel like when I'm sharing my work that I use these on, you're never really seeing a fully accurate picture and it bugs me to no end. But on the flip side of that is when people purchase original artwork that has this pen, I always get the same comment when they leave me a review or they, they contact me afterward to let me know what they think of the art and they say, oh my God, your artwork is so much more vibrant and glittery in person. Thank you. So that makes me feel better. People love the way it looks on screen without knowing that it looks even better in person. I dig that. My favorite Jelly Roll Moonlight is, of course, say it with me, the coral, neon vermilion, whatever it's supposed to be called. No, nope, I think I'm going to replace that with gold, but we are going to go in and add it to the hair in some segments, like so. This is going to take a while, so I'm going to cut the camera while I do that. Not quite finished up with the hair. Uh, the Moonlights are a very thick, creamy kind of a gel ink, so they do tend to bleed and they're a little, they're not quite as dramatic as puffy paint, but there is some dimension to them. So typically when I go over little areas like this, I will subsequently go over them with another layer of ink just to clean up the lines. And while I was doing that, the eye makeup was bothering me, so I went in and I gave her some graphic eyeshadow because I want to slap a little bit more color onto her face. And I'm going to be adding my, my colors. I swear, what is happening? What is happening? Okay, so this jelly roll is going through it. So let's grab the other one. Seriously? You guys are going to watch me have a meltdown on camera today. Oh my God. No. Why do you do this to me? Well, I guess there goes my neon yellow jelly roll. Moonlight metallic. Ya bastard. All right, well, I don't have another one, do I? Great, and my intention was to do the graphic liner so that I could add that bright yellow, but I guess that's not gonna happen. So plan B, we need to think of something and think of something quick. Let's just go with my favorite because my favorite never fails me. And we're going to do some pink, neon coral, vermilion, whatever it's called. Should we just fill it all in? We might as well, we already did make a mess of it. So 
Oh, I like that. Okay, so we're going to do that. And again, I will go in and clean up the lines later. For now, she's gonna stay like that, and then I'm going to pull that orange down underneath. Because we are gonna slap a lash on this girl. Sometimes I just have to put a lash on them. I love big lashes. I give my girls big lashes. I give the boys big lashes too. Just depends what I'm in the mood for. So, dang it, I really wanted to use that neon yellow. I wanted to play with it on the outfit. So if it revives, it revives and we'll use it. If not, then oh well. Her stars are going to be, we'll do black glaze and gold. My life, my camera cut me off. So you didn't see me color in the stars, the fishnets, and I don't know what else, but I'm going to off camera go through and clean up all of those goopy gel lines and give the girl a lash and then we shall reconvene. Hello, hello. Let's finish this little lady up today. This is going to be officially session number three. So I need to be done with her. She needs to be out of my life and done. Um, I don't like to spend more than three sessions on a coloring page. So that's just me. Some people enjoy spending weeks and weeks, months, years, decades on their pages, but no, 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 ma'am, that is not my style at all. I'm pretty sure I've said it before, but if I haven't, my favorite part of the coloring process is actually illustrating the books, not necessarily coloring in them. That's just my thing. I am a creator by nature. I like to just create things and I honestly get more enjoyment seeing your work than me coloring my own work. I just, that's just the way it is with my coloring books. I obviously enjoy watercoloring and my other illustration, but my coloring books in particular, I feel as though all of the pleasure is in illustrating and seeing what other people do with my creations because the intention of these books is to give other people an outlet. So they're not really about me. I create them, but the result is not about me. It's not, I'm creating them so that I can have fun coloring them. I could honestly care less about what I do with them afterward, but it's you lovely weirdos out there. So if you're wondering why I seem to not care very much and why I spend less time on my coloring pages than I do illustrations, well, now you know. They're like little pieces of candy to me. I just like to enjoy them for a little while and then that's it. So there you go. So what I'm doing now is just adding a little bit more line work to the spider webs. This obviously is not necessary. I mean, there's no such thing as something that's necessary in a coloring book because you're allowed to do whatever you want. But sometimes I enjoy adding extra line work just because, why not? I would like to give things a little bit more of a sketchier look. Maybe I feel as though the page is looking a little empty and it needs a little something something. For instance, the background right here in this section. Because originally this was blank because the spider web was only supposed to be here and here. But now that we've color blocked, I am going to go in and add some extra webbing just freehanding it I'm not going to bring out the pencil and get fancy with it it's just it is what it is 
I'm gonna slap it on there and I did go over this webbing over here with clear glitter. So we're going to do the same with this one. And that filled in the space just a little bit better. I like the way this looks. Okay, and just for funsies, I'm also going to grab a brush pen to further thicken up the border, make it just a little messier. okay there's a lot of white space on her body and I feel as though it needs a little something but I'm torn about what to do on that honestly I just don't know I'm gonna go in and put some clear glitter in her fishnets just in a few spots to give it a little bit of a glisteny look I'm not sure if you can hear, but my coffee maker is on. Well, my toaster oven and my coffee maker are both going right now, but it smells so good in here. I purchased a coffee that I've never tried before. It's called Stroop Waffle, and it's supposed to be a waffle flavored coffee, which sounds amazing. I buy the flavored coffees that don't have sweetener in them, but they still retain the flavor of whatever it is that they're trying to emulate. So the waffle will still taste like waffle and it will still taste like caramel, but without the sweetness, I love it. So good. Well, I don't know if this one's good, but the flavored coffees that I've tried in the past are good. So I'm hoping this one will be delicious as well. I want it. I'm drinking just a plain old black coffee right now, no flavoring, which is fine. But I'm in the mood for, for a little, I don't know, a little caramel waffly flavor. I would rather have caramel waffle flavored coffee than an actual caramel waffle. So not that I don't like them, but I don't exercise very much. So trying to fit into my clothing <laughs> so I don't <clears throat> overeat. Vintage clothing sizes are no joke. They are unforgiving and I intend to fit into them forever. <laughs> Knock on wood. So added a little bit of a lacy ruffly flourish and I'm going to add Let's go for that coral that I love so much. And what I'm going to do with the coral is add just a little bit of dimension to the ruffles here. So we're gonna slap some of this on here. And I'm also going to bring it down into the stripes of the same color. For the purposes of simply unifying the colors around the piece, that's all. And I will also be carrying some of that dot action up. Well, do we want the dots in the hair too? Uh, hmm, let's see. Now let's just add some scriggle scraggle up here. And today I am in the mood for some sparkle action. 
So I'm going to reach for, I don't know what pen. Am I gonna get the Moonlight or the Posca? Let's just grab the Moonlight in white. Yeah, before I do that, her skin is really bothering me. There, she needs some sort of, we'll just consider this lighting. So it's just some mood lighting that's hitting her skin and giving her this nasty green glow. Yeah, that works. Helps her to blend into the background just a little bit more. All right, that makes me feel a little better. Okay. Now, what did I say we were going to do? We're going to do the sparkles, yes? Okay. So for the sparkles, I'm just going to put them wherever I see fit. I'm going to try to concentrate them around her face, but for the most part, they're just going wherever. And I may be jumping between the Posca and the Jelly Roll because to this day, to this day, I have not found a white pen that I love, that is my absolute ride or die for highlighting. It has been the bane of my existence finding a white pen that I like. People seem to love the Posca. They seem to love the Moonlight. But for whatever reason, neither of them agree with me. So it's always a struggle. If you see me struggling unnecessarily with it, just know that it will probably work for you because these pens just have a vendetta against me, so. I don't know, I don't know what else to say. They're also a pain in the butt to go over each other. So if I'm trying to layer a white moonlight over another moonlight, it doesn't work very well. Again, I don't know, it seems to be a distinctly me problem, so disregard these issues. You may have never experienced them in your life. Good for you. I'm jealous and I kind of hate you for it, but that's okay. Interesting how the humble white pen ended up being, of all things, the one supply that gives me the most trouble. Constantly cleaning the tip, constantly doing this, that, and the other for it. It's like just just give me a break, I wanna love you, but you make it so difficult. I'm also going to add some of these sparkles to the spider webs in the background. See that one, how gunky and gross this one looks? I'm gonna have to clean that one up for sure when it dries. So in the meantime, let's start adding a few little dots of sparkle to the web. So I feel as though I'm running the risk of 
overworking. So I'm going to leave it just at that. And then I will add a couple up here. And then we will leave it alone. Ooh, I like the sparkle better on the lighter green. It's a more subtle effect. I like it. Clearly that is not dry yet, that is frustrating me. Okay, so our little Ralph needs a little something going on in the socket. Just a little bit of line work. And there you go, she is for the most part done. I will be going through and adding a few more sparkles to her, which you will see at the very end. At the end of my color and chat videos, I always insert a little clip of me twisting and turning the page around so that you can see what it looks like from different angles because straight on like this, it tends to look a bit flat, so you don't get the full picture of the sparkles and the glitter and all of that. So there you go, she is for the most part done. As I said, I am going to add just a few more sparkles, but that's going to be pretty much it. Thank you so much for joining me for this color in chat for hashtag Carloween. If you are participating, please do not forget to share your pages and to tag them with the Carloween hashtag so that I can peep them on Instagram. Also, if you have not already done so, please join the Facebook group where you guys can all share your pages amongst each other. <clears throat> Excuse me. Coffee, please. You can all share your pages amongst each other, and I pop in there fairly often to take a look at what everyone's doing and to gush over everyone's work. Quite frankly, that's just what I do. And I enjoy it, okay? I love looking at your work. So everything that you need to know will be down below. Links to my Etsy, my website, links where you can purchase this book. Keep an eye out on my community tab because I will be requesting votes for you all for my next color and chat. I'm going to be requesting votes for all of Carloween. So keep an eye out on that. Off I go. I will see you in the next one.